hello, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of GLP's Union Square. Yes, another oft-requested blend for me to review. I just did the first impressions video, and as I mentioned in that video, I could have sworn that I had reviewed this blend. I could have sworn that I had smoked it and enjoyed it. Uh, recently, someone asked me to review it, and I think I even responded to them with a, hey, I've already done that. Why don't you go look on my list of reviews, my playlist? But then I went and looked back at my playlist of pipe tobacco reviews and realized that, no, I have never reviewed this blend. And so I grabbed a tin, um, I tried it in the first impressions video, and so far, so good, gang. Mm. Yeah, it's supposed to be a nice, straight, pretty unadulterated Virginia with some flu cured, some brights, reds, uh, comes in a sort of broken flake, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I've got like ash all over my pipe here. This is my Dunhill Shell Briar 1962 pipe. Beautiful billiard. Love it. Um, but yeah, I'm also, well, I'm not going to say that I'm loving this blend yet, but GLP's makes some good pipe blends, and this one I don't think is going to be any different. So far, the initial impressions are good. Um, but in spite of that good news, there's a lot of craziness going on lately. I don't know if you've been noticing in the news, but apparently the world is going to end. We're all going to die. We're all going to die because of the missile strikes in Syria. Russia is going to attack us. I don't know. There's a lot of, a lot of nonsense going on in the world. Um, a lot of hysteria, and I know the news is geared towards making people freak out because that makes people click on things and read things and they get eyeballs, they want the eyeballs. Um, I have a tendency to be a little more calm, a little more even keel about these kinds of things. Um, I'm assuming the world is not going to end. I'm assuming World War III is not going to start, and uh, I think I'm going to stick to that until someone proves otherwise or someone tells me different. There's actual facts to back that up. Hopefully everything is going to calm down and we're going to be fine. Speaking of everyone dying, I uh, did an order recently, got some tins in, GLPs, Union Square, some pipe cleaners, you know, all the essentials, along with my very favorite tobacco blend. And uh, when I opened the box and got out the tins, I was shocked and appalled. And it almost made me completely abandon the pipe smoking hobby because there was some information imprinted on those tins that threw me for a little bit of a loop. Let me just show you one of them now. Oh my God. Can you read that? Did you know that? What's going on? Smoking kills? I had no idea. Um, this completely throws into question everything that I've always believed about tobacco products. I had no idea that there was any possibility of any sort of health effects whatsoever. Uh, I might have to quit pipe smoking entirely. Now, one thing I need to ask all of you guys, gang out there, are these European tins of Dunhill Elizabethan that are now being sold in the U.S. market, or have the threatened new labeling requirements that were supposedly part of the FDA deeming regulations finally gone into effect? Has anyone else recently purchased a Dunhill tin, and do they now have these ridiculous warning labels on them? I was wondering, because I hadn't gotten a tin in a while, well, Actually, I've gotten fairly recent tins. I mean, this, this is a recent tin. This was produced in January 26th of 2018, this GLP's tin. This one, um, there is a code for the dates on the Dunhill tins, and I can't remember what it is. I don't know. I, I should have compared this to an older Dunhill tin. I didn't keep... Oh, no, no. I think this does say EU. Maybe this was for the European market. I don't know, but I'm very curious. If you guys have ordered any tins recently, um, have you gotten some without the warning labels? Let's put it the right side up here. 
Or do you think this is perhaps a European market tin that was sold in the US? It was more expensive than the Dunhill tins had been um, in the past. I figured that was just a result of the marketplace determining that, the fact that Dunhill isn't making tins anymore or STG isn't making Dunhill tins anymore. Um, and so whatever stock is out there is what we have left. And so the prices are obviously, obviously going to go up a bit. But, you know, I got this from smoking pipes. Do they just have tins now that were for the European market and they're selling them in the US? Is that even legal? Is that possible? I don't know. I'm trying to look at stuff on here. I see EU directive something, something, something. I doubt you'll, you'll be able to make that out. Let me get closer here can see in that right there. Can you read that EU directive? Something, 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 something has some more information on the back here. <clears throat> Smoke contains benzene, nitrosamines, formaldehyde, and hydrogen cyanide. Obviously, uh, people in the UK and other places in the EU have had to have their tin art marred by these ridiculous uh, warnings on their tins. Uh, we have been lucky in the US that that's not the case, but I don't know. I hadn't heard enough recently or had recent information about the FDA deeming regulations. I had heard initially that the US market was going to start having these ridiculous warnings on the tins. I don't know if that actually ended up going into effect or if it will go into effect. So you, the viewer, can do me a favor and do other viewers a favor and let us know, is this part of that? Is this a new warning label? Or as I'm starting to think, is this actually just an EU tin that was sold in the US? Be very curious to find out. Um, we all know that smoking can be bad for you, especially if you're smoking cigarettes and you're inhaling them on a daily basis. I think we can all agree, well, no, we probably can't all agree, but I think most people who are pipe hobbyists, who don't habitu habit man, <coughs> who don't habitually just puff on a pipe and inhale the pipe, uh, locked in a hot box, just sucking in smoke-laden air all day, if you have an occasional bowl, you're not inhaling it, it's not quite the same, and I don't think it's gonna kill you. There are a lot of other things that will. Um, more quickly than perhaps puffing a pipe every now and again. But anyway, I would love to know if any of you out there have any more current information about this, uh, about the whole warning label situation. Leave your impressions or leave your information in the comments below. Thank you. So pretty dire news so far in the Sunday smoke. We're going to get into a nuclear war with Russia, apparently. Smoking kills. But to offset that, GLP's Union Square, pretty damn good. Um, I was thinking recently, and actually I had heard this in a podcast, or somebody was talking about this in a podcast, um, guilty pleasures. Things that we enjoy, perhaps uh, in media, that we would perhaps be embarrassed for other people to know about, or we wouldn't necessarily be uh, very brazen, like, hey, I like this thing. Maybe we're, maybe we're a little embarrassed about it, a little shy about l letting people know. And I was trying to think if there was anything that I consume that I would be sort of guilty about or I would consider a guilty pleasure. And there's not much because I don't really care what people think that much. Um, I guess if there was anything that, I guess it's not something that I'm embarrassed about, but <clears throat> if I let other people know, or if I tell other people about it, sometimes they're kind of like, oh, what are you doing watching that? And that would be the fact that I enjoy anime. I like to watch Japanese animation. Um, I'm not obsessed with it. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like an anime geek. I don't know every single series and follow every series. I do have a subscription to crunchyroll.com. Um, which is like, I don't know, it's like seven bucks a month or something, and they stream fairly recent Jap Japanese anime into the American market. Pretty cool, 1080p, a uh, nice HD stream without any commercials or anything. Um, and recently I've been watching Dragon Ball Super, which is, I guess, mildly embarrassing because, you know, I'm an adult male. Uh, but Dragon Ball Z was a show that I watched in my much younger days, and it has sort of special connotations for me, um, sort of nostalgic. 
and I just recently started watching Dragon Ball Super, not expecting to be wowed by it or anything, because Dra Dragon Ball Z is fairly ridiculous. Um, there is a newer version, Dragon Ball Z Kai, where they cut out all the crazy filler in Dragon Ball Z and just sort of compressed it into what was only in the manga. Um, but Dragon Ball Super, if there's any, any of you out there who watch anime or may enjoy anime um, and are not embarrassed about enjoying anime, check out Dragon Ball Z Super or just Dragon Ball Super because it's quite hilarious. It's really funny, um, quite enjoyable. It's still as ridiculous and off the wall as Dragon Ball Z was, but uh, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. I watch an episode a night almost, and there's like, I don't know, I think there's over 120 so far in this season, or not this season, but this run of Dragon Ball Super. And I also found out recently that I knew that the Japanese voice actor for Goku, the main character in the Dragon Ball series, was a woman, and I always watch it in Japanese. I'm one of those snobs. I much prefer the Japanese voice cast. And so I knew that she was a woman who did Goku's voice, but I found out recently that she's like an 83-year-old woman. And it's kind of crazy because I was watching some videos on YouTube of them actually recording um, the vocal performances for Dragon Ball Super. And there's this tiny little 83-year-old Japanese woman just like shrieking and jumping around. And it was, it was quite something. I really enjoyed the fact that I know that now has actually increased my enjoyment a little bit more. So uh, if you have any desire or if you're not prejudiced towards being an adult human and watching anime, I would check out Dragon Ball Super. There's a lot of great anime out there. One Punch Man is hilarious. Kill La Kill, hilarious. Um, a lot of shows that are... You know, people think of anime as being for children, but some of them are so violent and have such disturbing subject matter that I would never want a child watching any of it. So anyway, I guess if I had to pick a guilty pleasure, maybe it would be the fact that I enjoy anime and specifically Dragon Ball Super. And if you have a guilty pleasure, maybe you should put that in the comments below. It might spark an interesting conversation. But now we should get to Ask Stuff and Things. This is the part of the show where you can ask me a question and I may read it on a Sunday smoke. Tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, all one word and maybe I'll answer your question. Just like DReal208 did, in fact, actually, I think this was a message that he uh, sent to me on YouTube, but he says this. Um, he was discussing my exhausted rooster review, um, and he says, your description was more thorough and detailed, talking about the review. I also wonder that if over the last two weeks of smoking exhausted rooster, if you didn't in a way get exhausted yourself and start to nitpick at the blend, but what would you say was the last blend that really blew your proverbial socks off? I'm sorry, I didn't do a voice. Don't worry, I'll do voices for the other questions. Um, the last blend that I reviewed which blew my socks off, I would have to say the closest one would, ha would have to be, I have to say would have to be, um, probably GLP's Westminster. I really enjoyed that a lot, and I've been actually meaning to get another tin, and I probably will get another tin soon. It was quite delicious. And other than that, you know, most blends that I review, I usually like okay because I usually get things that I think I'm going to like. But Westminster was one of those that I was quite impressed by and could, could almost see becoming, you know, a daily driver, a blend that I return to quite a bit. All right, this is from the Grim Reaper. He says, with so many tobaccos out there, how long before the hoarding of buying up all the brands that are going away settles down and people start to explore? Um, I don't know that the hoarding is really that rampant and that widespread. I guess it depends on what your brand was. I know that there are certain people who really just follow a specific blender. There are people who pretty much only smoked GLP's blends or only smoked smoked <coughs> McClellan blends or only into Cornell and Deal. And maybe the fact that, you know, McClellan's going out of business, maybe if you're one of those people who only smoked those blends, maybe you were hoarding that up. But a lot of people, you know, don't touch other blends that much. And 
you know, even me specifically, I'm a real huge fan of Dunhill blends. And even though they're going away, maybe, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've heard recently that some people are saying that a lot of the major retailers in the US have almost a year's worth of stock um, before they run out. So maybe by that time, there'll be some sort of alternative. Maybe someone else will license the name, who knows? But if it's really going away, I'm not hoarding it because I know that there's no way for me to get enough to last me for the rest of my life if it never returns. So like you said, there are all these other blends out there, all these other blenders, all these other manufacturers. There's so many good blends and so many things that you can try. So I don't know that the hoarding is that crazy. I guess a lot of people anecdotally were talking about McClellan blends just being sold out immediately, but I think that was more to do with the fact that there just weren't, there wasn't a lot of stock built up perhaps. And I think with Dunhill there was, so we'll see. I've still been able to get it. Um, the price is going up, but uh, I guess we'll see how long that lasts. And hopefully people don't hoard. People will branch out and try new things like you suggest. This is from Teddy, Teddy Buckner. He says, <clears throat> Teddy here again. I tried to start the East Flake recently and it was the bomb. Highly recommend you review it. What are the odds of getting a review in the near future? Many people have asked me for Star of the East. In fact, I think I had a question about this in maybe one of the more recent Sunday Smokes. Um, the flake is not always easy to get and I think I have a email alert on smoking pipes for that. There is the non-flake version. I may review that as well. A lot of people will swear, oh, you can't review that. You have to do the flake version, but we'll see. But I do plan on reviewing one version of Star of the East, um, preferably the flake, and I guess we'll see if I'm able to get any in. This next question from Wade Wells, at Wade O. Wells. He says, I finally, oh wait, voices. He says, <clears throat> I finally bought a pair of the 405 Indy boots from Alden. Oh, cool. I uh, talked about those in the last Sunday Smoke. Excellent boots made by an excellent American boot maker, shoemaker. One of the few kind of old school American made shoes left um, that have been around for a long time. He says, <clears throat> continuing, after seeing your video and deliberating about it for two years, they're great. Where do you get your oils, creams for them? Specifically Alden's Fine Boot Cream. Thanks. Um, I do use Alden's Fine Boot Cream on my Alden's and I think I got it from, I can't remember. I know that Amazon has it sometimes, um, usually through like a third party seller, but you can get it from Amazon and they have different kinds. There's the sort of clear or the non colored non-dye version. There's also a brown, there's a black. There are different colors that you can use for your boots depending on the color that, that your boot is or if you just want to use the natural leather color that the boot already is and not, it, it's a difference between, you're not shining your boots like a work boot like the Alden 405s. So you're not actually using shoe polish on them. At least I don't think you should. I don't think it looks kind of right on those. So a boot oil, a boot cream, um, but you can have some that have some color in them. I'm getting way too involved in this. But basically, uh, Amazon, I'm pretty sure has it. There's a, a website called the Shoe Mart that has it for sure. Um, and then you can also order it directly from Alden, as far as I know. I think I have done all three of those at one point or another. The Shoe Mart, I think, is maybe your best bet and then um, Alden as well. It might be a little more expensive getting it through Alden. And then Amazon is kind of hit or miss depending on which third party seller has it at the time. And you know, if you're gonna get your prime shipping and all that good stuff. But yeah, check out Amazon, Alden, or the Shoe Mart. And Alden, I don't think has an actual like retail website. They just have um, sort of affiliate stores. So I think it was an Alden store in San Francisco, perhaps, or it was somewhere in Northern California that I actually ordered um, a tin of boot cream from at one point. But I think your best bet is a shoe mark. So thank you for the questions. I did a little shorter because it seems like sometimes the ask stuff and things section of the show gets a little too long. But remember, if you have a question for me and you'd like it to be read on the show and perhaps answered on the show, Tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to get to you. Um, gang, so much that we talked about today, 
warning labels on Dunhill tins. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced this in the US. GLPs, Union Square. Look for the first impressions video of that this Wednesday. Still continuing on with my Subnautica series on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. Check that out as well. But now I must go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday. Smoke. I'll see you later. Mm -mm 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 -mm.